Hi there and welcome to this video. I'm Wo, mixing engineer. In this video we're going to make a bass pad like Drake uses or in some more Reese based stuff for the drum and bass styles. The basics of this patch are really really easy. You start with a sine wave. If you click here to factory basic shapes. You can select different wave shapes. We want the sine wave in this case. We'll turn the pitch down two octaves. Minus 24 semitones. And you get this really, really deep sound. Next, we'll play around with the envelope. You can do this if you want some kind of bass pad plug, but if you want to hold the note, you can drag up the sustain and put the release around one second to 1.3 seconds, depending on what sound you're going after. Easy as that. That was it for oscillator 1. Oscillator 2, you will use a saw wave. This one, the standard initialized waveform is a saw wave. If you don't have a saw wave, you can go to factory basic shapes. If you click 3D, you can see the different shapes. And you can morph between them, and we want a saw wave that looks like this. Sounds a bit harsh. We'll also turn it down two octaves, 24 semitones, 24 semitones. Uh, then we use eight voices. You can go higher, you can go lower. Just remember, the higher you go, the more CPU heavy it will be. And I don't think it will even sound that much better because it gets clouded up. I don't hear a big difference between eight or 16. Uh, the detune is around 10%, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. I, I like it around 9 because it has, still has the clarity. And to make things interesting, more interesting I must say, is playing around with a low pass. We're going to use a filter later on, but this, this helps shape the sound before it even hits the filter to get a more rich and deep sound, I think, and that's a bit unique to vital. You can hear the resonance creeping up. I like it just below halfway. Next up, the filter, very important. This is really gonna make the sound, the filter. To have both oscillators go to the same filter, click here and select filter 1. Uh, both of them go through filter 1. If you leave it on filter 2, you still get the filtered sound from this low pass, but we want to filter it here. I personally use this form without any resonance and just find the sweet spot. I like my bass pads to be very dark because I use it beneath uh, chords or beneath 808s or actually on top of 808s if you want to if you want to mix it correctly. And then I play around with the drive knob. You can hear some more intensity coming in with the drive knob. There's almost, this sounds distorted. But it just adds something, little character. To make it a bit more interesting to listen to, to kind of modulate it, if you will, is uh, pull up the key track a little bit. You can see the higher I play, the more the filter opens. So this is pretty much open, way more closed. Too deep, too, too deep of a note, but you see the filter closing. And when I play like this, everything overlaps. You can change the voices here to one, legato, always glide, add a little bit of glide around here, just play around with this style you want. And now we have filter opening up a little bit. I'd like to have it a bit less, a bit deeper. This this sounding nice. Maybe a bit more glide. This is the basis for a bass pad. The next thing to make it more interesting and make it suit your needs is effects. To give it more space, to give the bass pad more space, you can use either a reverb or a delay. 
and I like to use a delay instead of a reverb because reverb muddies up all the low end information and energy that is going on. With delay, if you set it a specific way, you can make it very short and give a sense of space without actually having the space with the reverb. We do that by lowering the feedback. You can keep it on mono or ping pong, depending on how interesting you want the sound to be. Roll off the low end. You can click and drag up and left and right to control the cutoff and the spread. And just remember this delay effect must be very subtle. You don't want to have a wide delayed sound uh, in your bass pad because it will muddy up the rest of the track. This, this sound is meant to be beneath chords, beneath other instruments. You could hear the delay right there. Put it on a ping pong. You can hear the feedback increasing. I like the mono one for, for the sound I'm going for right now. Next sound is a chorus. I like to use this to, to give it a more modulated feel, to have it occupy the spaces on the sides more, but you have to be careful where you place the instrument, where you place the bass pad in your mix, because it can quickly grab too much of the space available and make your other instruments sound ill-defined. To keep the chorus in check, I'd like to lower the voices, uh, play around with the cutoff. You just don't want the low sine wave here to be affected too much. You really need to find the sweet spot, and that goes for the delay, for the chorus, and for the filters, because this sound is completely dependent on filters. You have here the low pass filter, another low pass filter, and you have another high pass filters to make the sound fat and interesting. If you put some nasty 808s on this, you can already hear the track coming alive. Lastly, you can play around with the distortion. I played around with uh, several styles and uh, personally in Vital only like the soft clip for this sound because the rest is just too much. Bit crush, it gives more of a electronic uh, heavy trap track vibe and I don't want that for a smooth R&B-ish Drake pad I'm going for in this instance. If you raise the drive, lower the mix, play around with the ratio between these two. Here as well are the post fader. Put this one a bit higher than your filter one over here. So you can get a bit of the drive coming through, but still have the nice cutoff you set here. Maybe for a chorus part you can increase this to increase the intensity and then when the verse hits you can keep it like this. Super, super nice sound. Because we're using the sound as a second layer, I'd suggest not to use a compressor because it will take out all the dynamics and make the subtle modulations more flat and less interesting. So it's, it's more upfront, the bass sound, and we don't want that. What you can do to make it more interesting is add an LFO to your frequency cutoff point. And in this case, I think a sine wave is most interesting. Here we have the sine wave. It's way too much. You can do this. Make it a bit slower. Increase it a bit less. Maybe even make it bipolar. A bit quicker. And now we have a very interesting, modulated, flowing and changing sound. It's great for beneath any sound you like to support. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And if you want to see more videos like this, see you in the next one. Bye bye.